What is good everybody? I am back with a brand new video and today I'm going to be giving you a few tips on how to throw the forehand in disc golf. Let's get into it. Now first and foremost, I definitely want to go over the grip that I use. I use a bit of a two finger stack grip. The inside of my middle finger is pressed up against the rim, followed by by my pointer finger. My thumb is obviously on top of the disc and my ring finger and pinky kind of rest on the side of the rim. What this is doing is giving me a little bit more stability with the disc as well as it helps me control my angles a bit better just because of that added stability helps me control my angles. Now there's definitely a few types of forehand grips out there. I just personally haven't really experimented with them or know too much about them to want to tell you information on it. But this is definitely the forehand grip that works for me. Now, as far as it goes for the grip of the forehand, you definitely want to have a firm grip. If you have anything too loose, what's going to happen is that it's going to come out with a lot of wobble. You're not going to get a clean release on the disc. If the disc comes out wobbly, it's going to hurt distance and it's also going to hurt your accuracy because the disc needs to correct itself before it hits the line that you meant to put it on. So definitely have a firm grip on the disc, but you don't want to grip the disc too hard. Otherwise the disc isn't going to come out of your hand when you want it to. Nothing too crazy when it comes to the forehand grip. And I'm sure you probably already know kind of an idea on how to hold the disc in a forehand throw, but I definitely wanted to go over that. Now, as far as it goes for the actual throw itself, what I often see with newer disc golfers trying to throw the forehand is they're simply trying too hard and really trying to muscle the disc. I see some really crazy reach backs, some really aggressive like pull throughs. I don't know what you want to call it in a forehand. I guess just really vicious throws in general. One is going to hurt your accuracy a lot. If you have everything going really fast, kind of crazy all over the place, you're probably going to release the disc on an ante and it's probably just going to burn into the ground. With the forehand, you get a decent amount of distance simply by your wrist. During your throw, you're gonna wanna actually cock your wrist back as pretty much as far as it possibly can. You want your wrist to be somewhat loose. Obviously, you don't want the disc like flinging around on it, whatever angle it wants, but somewhat fairly loose so that you can flick your wrist forward. This is what's gonna create that spin. What you should feel is some pressure on that inside of your middle finger. If you go with my grip, you're going to feel some pressure on the inside of this rim. And when you go to flick, that's the last point of contact. So that's where you're going to get all your spin from. If you don't cock your wrist back at all, and you're worried about how your arm is moving, you're not going to get any rotation on the disc, which is ultimately what gets the disc flying. I feel like in my throw, I cock my wrist back right when I start to come through. So right about the middle of my throw, my wrist will be cocked back and ready to fling forward. You're not pushing your wrist forward, that's slow. You're actually flicking your wrist fast. Now what I suggest doing to work on this is simply get your slower speed disc, your putters, maybe some of putt and approach discs, and simply do some standstills where you just flick the disc forward. Once you get this down, you're easily gonna be able to throw a forehand already 150 feet to 185 feet and possibly further once you get the right movement down. Now I say to take your slower speeds like your putters because if you're starting with drivers, it's gonna be much harder to see if you're actually getting a clean release with the disc because drivers are more stable. So they're gonna wobble a little bit less and correct themselves much faster than your putters will. You're actually gonna see some actual wobble in your putters um, much easier than you would your drivers. As well as if you start with your drivers like I did, when I first started, I only threw drivers. And so I had no real touch with my putters on forehands and they always came out wobbly. To this day, I still have an issue with this. So definitely I would start out with your putters and just do a few standstill flicks where you're getting some nice clean releases and some actual spin on the disc. These forehands that I'm showing you now range at 160 feet and it's simply no effort at all. It's a lot of wrist action that's snapping the disc forward, getting the spin on the disc and ultimately going to 160 feet. Now, is that a very far distance? Of course not, but you gotta think all you're doing is simply getting that wrist snap down and that's what's gonna help you the most in the long run. Now, the third thing that I wanna go over is actually the elbow and what that is doing during the throw. When you go to reach back, you're gonna reach back with your elbow bent. 
you're not reaching back like you would a backhand. You don't want to reach back straight back. First of all, when you come forward, there's going to be a lot of tension on your shoulder, your elbow. There's going to be a lot more room for error and also it could lead to you getting hurt, which is not good. So with the forehand, you're going to get power from reaching up versus out and your elbow is going to be bent and not straight. One of the most important things when it comes to power with the forehand is making sure you actually lead with your elbow. So your elbow, when you come through, should start the throw and it should also be in front of the disc. Your disc should be back here and your elbow comes and pushes forward and then you come and sling the disc out of your hand. If the disc leads the throw, first off, I think it's gonna feel really awkward. And second off, you're not gonna get that flinging rotation. In my head, when you lead with your elbow, this is creating some tension through the forearm, through your wrist, where the disc needs to come forward. To have our body and arm be bent back like this is not a normal movement for us. And so when we're creating this tension, it just wants to bring the disc and actually fling it forward. Of course, I don't know all the science behind this, but this is kind of just how it goes in my head that we're creating a tension between the disc, between our elbow, that eventually that we just need to release all of that power and ultimately get this disc to go. Secondly, your elbow should stay close to your hip. If your elbow is all the way out here and you're not compact, it's gonna lose a lot of power. And once again, I think it's gonna put a lot of strain on the inside of your shoulder. When you come through, you wanna lead with the elbow, keep it close to the right hip, and then push through. You don't necessarily want to glue it down to your hip because then you're gonna lose mobility, but you definitely wanna have it somewhere close to the hip. And I think this is gonna help you with distance, with power, and once again, not getting hurt because that is one thing that I see a lot in the forehand is players having shoulder issues or elbow issues. Now let's just watch my full swing when it comes to the forehand. As you can see that my arm doesn't necessarily come all the way back. And if I was going for a more distant shot, my disc is gonna lead upwards and not out getting me more power to actually come through my shot. But I kind of do a little chicken wing, I'm not gonna lie. My reach back is probably not the greatest, but it also just works for me and I'm really consistent with it. But what you do see, my elbow leads the throw. It's close to my body. It's not, it's not too close, but it's also not too far away keeping me nice and compact, keeping some power within this shot. My wrist is cocked back here, ready to be flinged forward and not pushed forward or a slow motion whatsoever, but this is a quick motion with your wrist, getting me some wrist snap there and ultimately getting me the distance that I'm looking for in my forehand. I don't have a crazy insane forehand distance, probably a max shot for me if it's flexed, probably around the 375-ish range. If it's not flex, maybe 350. Overall, these are the three or four main tips that I would give a newer player looking to build on their forehand and things that I think actually will help them further the process. I realize I am no pro at this, but these are just a few tips on how I look at the forehand and how I would try and teach it to newer disc golfers. If you have any additional information that you think is very important, leave it down in the comments. If you want another video about like the whole entire throw, maybe footwork and whatnot, leave that down in the comments and maybe I can do a separate video going through the whole entire form, including the run up that I didn't really get to today. Anyway guys, I hope this video helped you. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Go follow Chase and Chains underscore on Instagram where I post it daily and we will see you in the next one.